Share the pride, the incredible story of the 1989 Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Take a giant gopher, a collection of curvaceous cheerleaders, a goofball who fires a cannon off his head, a few dozen hard-nosed football players, and a stadium full of uncontrollable rowdies. And what have you got? Well, it's called Rider Pride. And it's as much a part of the good times as Molson Canadian, what beer's all about. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders are a part of the Saskatchewan way of life. The team and their loyal fans enjoy a unique relationship. They have celebrated the good times. And together, they have survived hard times. The Saskatchewan people and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders share the pride of a long prairie tradition of pulling together in the face of adversity. In 1988, the Saskatchewan farm economy was hit hard by drought. The devastating downturn paralleled the long, dry era of the province's football team. Since their 1976 breakup appearance, witnessed from the sidelines by injured rookie Roger Alday, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had missed the playoffs 11 consecutive years. The Riders and their fans were due for a change in the weather. In 1988, Ryder Fortunes took an uphill swing. The team broke the long, dry spell with an impressive 11-7 and seven record. The second-place finish rewarded the Ryder's long-suffering loyal fans with a home playoff game, a classic cold-weather confrontation in the great tradition of Taylor Field postseason play. Playoff jitters hurt the Riders early when they turned the ball over on BC's first punt of the game. The Lions quickly capitalized. BC Lions second and ten from the Saskatchewan ten. Dunnigan up under common signals. Straight back to pass. Pumps once. Jumps up into the pocket. Will he run? Will he pass in the end zone? Streeter. Touchdown, BC. The Riders trailed 18-17 in the third quarter when the Lions' explosive running attack broke the game wide open. BC first and ten from their own 54. Dunnigan hands off to Cherry looking to the wide side. Cuts the corner. He's going. Albright and Chase down the sidelines. Cuts back inside. Suter takes him down at the 12. 44 yards the gain. Anthony Cherry. The Lions finish the drive on top 25-17. Early in the fourth quarter, the playoff Green Riders learned firsthand the demoralizing effect of being victims of a defensive touchdown in a playoff game. Saskatchewan second and three from their own 34. Burgess hands off inside to McRae looking for a hole. He's hit the ball's down. Ballard's got it. He's on top of it. No flags, no whistles. He's running for the end zone. 10, 5, touchdown BC. There was that empty feeling of a sudden death playoff loss. The abrupt end to the Riders' successful season was disappointing, but not discouraging for the playoff novices. You can never say for, for a long period of time that uh, we don't have playoff experience because we do. And uh, whether or not that is a, a big intangible factor for us, it's, you know, now we've got playoff experience and we, uh, we, we did gain a little experience by what happened to that. Hope. Second year head coach John Gregory had accomplished what six previous head coaches could not, leading the Saskatchewan Rough Riders into the playoffs. For Gregory, the team had taken an important step toward winning a Grey Cup. I think they learned that uh, you know if you're there you 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 have a shot and you got to make the best of it and uh, I, I think that uh, the key for a football team is to get the monkey off their back and get into playoffs which we did and uh, we have to make another step next year for 12 year veteran Roger Aldag the next step would be a great cup retirement was out of the question I'm gonna have to sit down and discuss it I think uh, right now I I hate to quit now, and all the fact that we've uh, got a little more work to accomplish, the fact that we didn't make it to the Grey Cup, and that's my goal right now. But uh, the team we got next year, it looks like we're going to be tough to beat next year, but 
that you hate to talk about next year when this year is still going on. In 1989, Assistant General Manager Al Ford took over as GM. Ford's roots in Saskatchewan as a native son and his ties to the Rough Rider tradition as a former player and coach solidified a program of continuity. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders provincial tradition of holding training camp in Saskatoon began its eighth year in 1989. Early detractors predicted the Rough Riders would have a tough time just making the playoffs. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders started the 89 regular season against the Calgary Stampeders. In preparation for the season's opener, Coach John Gregory sensed a positive change from 88. I think we're better at it from a, an emotional standpoint and from a, a team leadership standpoint. I think this team is all business, and I think that's the way football should be. That first home game against Calgary was a crystal ball on a Cinderella season. The game encapsulated the frustrating lows, the euphoric highs, all the emotional peaks and valleys which awaited the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and their fans in what was to be an incredible year. Going into the fourth quarter, the Riders needed three touchdowns to overcome a 20-point deficit. The task seemed impossible. Rider fortunes changed, though, when Albert Brown ran a kickoff back 65 yards to the Stampeder 35. On the next play, the Riders hit Pater. Slots in motion. Burgess back to pass, looking long downfield. He gets nailed, gets it away. Touchdown, Saskatchewan. A Calgary field goal widened the stamp lead to 29-15. Seven minutes and 43 seconds was still enough time for two Rough Rider touchdowns, but two Rider drives ended in turnovers. With less than two minutes to go, a third drive clip. On first down, Burgess up under calling signals, takes the snap, drops straight back, looking inside, finds his man, Narcisse, touchdown. Burgess up under, rolls right, looking long downfield, puts it high and long, it's up, it's up, touchdown, Narcisse. With the game tied, 29, 29, and 126 to play, the Riders got a big break when Jeff Treflin recovered a fumble. The Riders cashed in on the fumble recovery. Dave Ridgway trying to cap a big comeback. 41 yards out. It's up. It is good. Final score, Saskatchewan 32, Calgary 29. The miraculous comeback established the Riders' fourth quarter reputation as cardiac kids and demonstrated the kind of calm under pressure character which would carry the team and their fans through the emotional roller coaster of the 89 season. Quarterback Tom Burgess's relief appearance was a key to the heart-stopping victory. First touchdown means they have to change their defense. If we don't score, they just play that uh, deep prevent zone. We never get anything done. We get the first touchdown in, then they have to start mixing up defense because they have to stop us. When they start mixing up defense, go man-to-man -man covering us, and we can play our game and win. The first touchdown, I beat him to the inside, and the second touchdown, I knew he was going to play the inside, so I went outside of him, and Tom Burgess made a good throw, and we had to do something right away. And never say never, the fat lady haven't sung yet. You know, that's one of the greatest comebacks I've been associated with to put that many points on the board with two and a half minutes to go. Uh, it's great for us to, to know that we can come back from the mistakes that we made, to come back and, and really eke out the game was, was kind of nice. Dave Ridgway would face an almost identical situation 20 games later, but more would be riding on that outcome. The Riders' ability to overcome adversity was given another early season test the following week in BC Place. Short staffed by injuries to Steve Crane and Dan Rasovich, the linebacking core had to be shored up by the undersized Jeff Treflin. In BC Place, the Ryder offense knew they had to pick up the slack for a weakened defense, and they did it with resourcefulness. Second and one from the 39, short yardage crew in. Burgess takes the handoff, rolls wide side, looks for the outlet man. It's Jurison. 20, 15, 10. Ryan can't bring him down. Touchdown, Jurison. Final score, Saskatchewan 42, BC 37. The BC Lions would put Ryder pride to a more severe test later in the season. A harbinger the Riders were in for a history-making season took place in Winnipeg. Winnipeg Stadium had been a Rough Rider graveyard in the 80s. The green and white had not won there since 1981. On August 4th, the Rough Riders broke that losing jinx with more fourth quarter heroics. Final score, Saskatchewan 29, Winnipeg 27. After soundly beating Ottawa at home, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders season rode a deep trough. When the Riders came to the Sky Dome for the first time, they were on a four-game losing skid. It was very disappointing that uh, we hit a part in our season in the middle where 
we struggled, and there were a lot of reasons for it. And when I looked at uh, the reasons for why we struggled, um, I, at least I could find reasons and point my finger at it. And probably the most uh, crucial reason of all was the uh, injuries that we had. And uh, I think a lot of times, uh, a lot of people get too much credit when you do well, and they also get too much blame when you don't do very well. I think the the best thing about our downtime was uh, the fact that uh, I think staffs and organizations and actually the fans and, an or and a football team is measured by how you work through the, the tough times. With less than three minutes left in the game, the Riders needed that old fourth quarter magic to overcome the Argos' 24-13 advantage. This time it was Kent Austin who performed the comeback wizardry. First and ten from the 11, Austin back to pass, looking wide side of the field in the end zone for Elgar. What a catch! On their next series, the Riders quickly drove down to the Toronto 20 to set up the go-ahead major. Less than a minute and a half to play. Austin back to pass. It's a rope in the end zone to Narcisse. Touchdown! Final score, Saskatchewan 29, Toronto 24. When the Riders left the Sky Dome on September 9th, it seemed unlikely they would return in November to represent the West in the 1989 Grey Cup. The victory over the Argos put the Riders back on the winning track. But would that be a big enough psychological lift against the formidable Edmonton Eskimos? The Eskimos invaded Taylor Field strutting a 9-1 record. The Riders were 5-5. Five five. But the team was surprisingly confident they could exploit Edmonton's manic pit bull defense. Their strategy produced big dividends early. On only their third possession, the Ryder offense executed one of the most exciting plays of the 89 season. Second and seven from the 37. Austin from the shotgun, back to pass, over the middle, hits Fairholm, a finger tipper, splits the seam, it's a foot race to the end zone. Francis can't catch him, Wilson can't catch him, the wheels take it in. The Riders held a 17-1 lead when the defense forced a big turnover. And rolling out wide side of the field, looking downfield. Here comes the pressure. Jurison hits him. The ball goes loose. Goldsmith has got it in the four. Nelson Jones scored on the next play. The Riders had Edmonton in a deep hole, 24 to one. The Edmonton game was one of the finest hours for the defense in 1989. And back to pass. Here comes the inside pressure. Jurison's got him. Takes him down. The Riders with eight sacks on the day. Aided by a strong wind in the third quarter, Edmonton threw a scare into Ryder fans with a 21-point burst. Early in the fourth, Edmonton added a field goal to put the Eskimos eight points ahead going home. The Riders didn't panic, though. Instead, they maintained their poise and came back. Austin straight back to pass, looking down the sidelines, finds Narcisse. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10. He's taking it home. Touchdown, Narcisse. Final score, Saskatchewan 48. Edmonton 35. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders had scored 48 points against the league's best defense, winning decisively. It was the Riders' best home field performance of 89. The satisfying victory was something the Riders would take with them into the 89 playoffs. Veteran Roger Aldag summed up the team's feelings. I think our whole group today played pretty well and uh, with our running backs and Kent did just a super time, a super job uh, getting rid of the football and we ran the ball a little bit and it's just a great win. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders had shown themselves and their fans they may have the medal of champions. Fresh from the Edmonton triumph, the Riders arrived in Lansdowne Park with a 6-5 record. The Riders were favorites to make it two wins in a row against the CFL's worst team, a team they had destroyed 58-22 August 7th at Taylor Field. Inexplicably, the wheels fell off the green machine. The team came up flat in Ottawa. First and 10 from the 32, Allen rolls out, looks long downfield, puts it up. Up has got it! 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Riders! Ottawa scored a touchdown and added the convert for a nine-point bulge. There were no fourth-quarter miracles in Ottawa. It was an exasperating loss for the fans and their team. Inside of two weeks, the Riders had beaten the best and lost to the worst. The jury was definitely out on whether the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were championship material. Many questioned the team's maturity. Proves one thing, we can play with the best and we can play with the worst. It comes back to that old thing you've been talking about all along. You're not good enough just to show up. You better be ready to play. No question about that. I think we have to learn to play hard every play every game. Uh, you think they can learn that in time for BC? Well, they're better.
They will. They will play. <laughs> it's it's a it's a funny it's a roller coaster. Another sudden drop waited just around the next hair-raising curve for rider fans and their team. The loss to Ottawa was a new low for the 89 riders, but on a crisp September night in Taylor Field, the rider season bottomed out against the BC Lions. The season's rubber match was a pivotal game for both teams. The Lions needed a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. The riders wanted to eliminate the Lions and keep pace with second place Calgary. In the third quarter, the score was 12-10 riders when Albert Brown turned BC's threatening drive into a Rough Rider touchdown. Cunningham overthrows Belfontaine. Albert Brown right there, picks it off. He's got the length of the field to go. Only one man to beat. It's Matt Dunnigan. Dunnigan can't get there. Albert Brown will go all the way. Rider fans were in for a cliffhanger. Behind 30-26. Quarterback Matt Dunnigan led the Lions' comeback bid to the Saskatchewan 53-yard line. With time for just one play, the Lions faced the impossible and hoped for the improbable. Then it happened. The unexpected, the unbelievable. Barring a penalty, this should be the last play of the game. Dunnigan back to pass to Hail Mary. Puts it up, looking for the crowd, and David Williams. Souter Dex Williams! The flags go down! The instant replay shows Souter Dex Williams and then takes the ball in the head. Lions get another chance from the 18. Dunnigan back to pass, looking for the big man in the end zone. Williams, it's up, the ball knocked away. Pass interference, Albert Brown called on the play. From the one, Dunnigan, short yardage crew in, calling signals up under. Keeps it himself, bobbles the ball, where is it? Dunnigan's got it, touchdown BC, Joe Gallette can't believe it. The final two plays had taken place with no time left on the stadium clock. Final score, BC 32, Saskatchewan 30. The loss was not only demoralizing, but Saskatchewan was now in danger of missing the playoffs. BC now held the edge in the season series. Some stuff happens, you know, it's the Hail Mary pass to the right, and that's all you're hoping for, and uh, you know, all you gotta do is let the guy catch it and tackle and the game's over with. They didn't do that, okay, it's another chance. The shocking loss of what should have been a sure win was personally devastating to head coach John Gregory, who later described the defeat as the lowest point in his coaching career. After the loss, the stunned coach put on a brave face. You know, the easiest thing to do when you lose is to, is to point fingers and to shuffle people, and I don't think that uh, everybody makes mistakes. Richie Hall was a study in the emotional letdown felt by the entire team. I think we have a lot of character in this team and we have a lot of confidence in ourselves. We're just, we're just beating ourselves this year and until we eliminate those things, then uh, we're going to continue to lose heartbreakers like this. Many fans and many media members thought the team would never recover from such a disastrous defeat. Irate fans wanted Glenn Souter railroaded out of town. The rider's safety had to take his phone off the hook to avoid hate calls. Coach John Gregory's refusal to publicly finger Glenn Souter or any of his players as scapegoats for the BC loss helped make the BC debacle a turning point in the Riders' season. Instead of dividing the team, the BC loss had a unifying effect. The Rider team rallied together as a closer unit. Glenn Souter, coming off a personal low point in his career, reflected the entire team's attitude in resolving to leave behind the negative baggage of the BC loss in favor of a more positive approach. You know, I feel pretty responsible about the whole thing, and I just, uh, I just glad I got another chance and another five weeks in the season to uh, to play well and to help the team get into the playoffs. And then once we get in the playoffs, anything can happen. With second place a remote possibility, the '89 Riders renewed their focus on a goal few outside the team knew about: winning the Grey Cup. Gary Greger added another dimension to our football team. Um, Gary is a, is a sports psychologist and he has, I think, a lot of good ideas. I think a lot of the ideas that he had were ideas that we've already been through. However, it's sometimes good to have uh, the same things being said from a different mouth. In October, the Riders began a three-game series against the Calgary Stampeders. The October 8th game at McMahon Stadium was the first test of the renewed team unity. In the first quarter, the Riders bounced back from the BC disgrace like winners, striking early and often. Ray Elgard was injured in the BC game, and after only one play, Jeff Farrell had to drop out of the Calgary game. As so often happened in 1989, a stand-in from the Rider bench took the spotlight. Backup slot back Rob Bresciani enjoyed a career game against the Stampeder secondary. 
Austin on second and five. Dumps it over the middle to Tim McRae. Bobbles the ball. Bresciani takes it away. Cuts by one tackler through another. Hits the seam. It's a foot race. They can't catch him. He goes all the way. The Stampede has made it close in the final quarter, narrowing the rider lead to six points. Finding their old fourth quarter poise, the Rough Riders mounted a classic 75-yard ball control drive, which killed the clock and added an insurance touchdown. Final score, Saskatchewan 39, Calgary 26. In a remarkable display of character, the Rough Riders restored confidence in themselves with a solid win only eight short days after the BC loss. The win over Calgary was a great victory for team pride. Nonetheless, fans remain skeptical about their team's chances in 89. It's unfortunate they haven't been able to perform at home for their fans. There uh, have been some real disappointing games at home this year. Oh, I think it's been pretty spotty. Really spotty. They've had that uncanny ability to shoot themselves in the foot at the most unopportune time. And I, uh, I really expected more from them, honestly. When Calgary returned to Taylor Field, the fans were treated to an exciting game, but again, they were witness to the kind of breakdowns which had characterized the 89 Riders as inconsistent. Baker to punt from his own 11. Laird gets a hand on it. The ball goes loose. Thurman's got it. Touchdown, Calgary. In the third quarter, a breakdown in the Riders' secondary turned into a game breaker. The Rider fans had watched their final home game of the 89 season. As they filed out of the stadium, they had little inkling the Riders would be a team of destiny. In Calgary, for the second last regular season game, the Riders fanned hopes of a second place finish with their third victory over the Stamps. Once again, the Riders drew strength from the bench and showed a lot of pride. Commonwealth Stadium, the home of the Edmonton Eskimos. Edmonton had not lost a home game all year. With the Riders missing nine starters, the odds favored a season ending perfect record. The Eskimos were looking to exact revenge for their September defeat in Taylor Field. The Rough Riders stayed close for one quarter. In the second, Edmonton began to pull away with an 82-yard touchdown drive. At halftime, Edmonton led 21-9. In the third quarter, every Edmonton offensive play seemed to be a big play. And back to pass from his own 47. Pumps once, lots of time, lets it go long. Richards got it, 30, 25, 20. He's gonna walk in, nobody near him. And first and 10 from his own 45. Looks long downfield for Keith Wright, puts it up. He's got it. Turn spins, heading for the end zone. He'll dance his way in. Keith Wright, touchdown. Austin hurt his knee in the Edmonton game. Tom Burgess finished the game, and that valuable playing time created the confidence in him for his relief appearance in the Western Final. Leading 42-10 in the fourth quarter, facing third down, Edmonton decides on running up the score. The final score, Edmonton 49, Saskatchewan 17. Edmonton had accomplished their goal of setting a new single season standard, 16 wins. The Eskimos had easily destroyed the hobbled Saskatchewan club, but the Rough Riders had their sights set on a much larger goal, winning the Grey Cup. The Riders finished the regular schedule with nine wins, two below the 88 season, and one place back in third. On the surface, the 89 Riders had taken a step back, but before the semifinal in Calgary, coach John Gregory felt the team was moving forward. Not ready to play in the playoffs, and there's something wrong with them. Uh, they shouldn't be playing professional football. I sense with the players that, uh, you know, last year I think that they were just satisfied to make the playoffs. I don't think that that would satisfy their appetite at all, and uh, they appear to me to be very alert and, uh, and ready to go in and, and beat Calgary. I think maybe last year, because it was our first time, uh, there's a little bit more uh, anxiety, uh, you know, throughout the squad. I don't feel that this year at all. I think the guys are pretty loose and ready to play. I think the guys around here are starting to see some people come back. Uh, you know, the, the feeling's good. People are getting more healthy. Uh, you know, we've won a lot of games. We're going into a place where we've won twice, too, on the road. And, and you know, that, that can't help but give you confidence. And um, we're a very confident team. We're a veteran club, and we feel very confident about ourselves. Even before the Calgary semifinal, it was clear the Riders were thinking Grey Cup. Well, like last year, we're saying 11 years is enough, and we made one playoff game, and this year it's a matter of we're going to make it about three more steps, and uh, this year we're not content just to be in the playoffs, and we're going, we're thinking all the way this year. We're looking more to a three-game stretch and getting in the Grey Cup and winning that, and uh, if we fall short of that goal, then we'll, then we'll be upset. Uh, beginning of last year, goal was to make the playoffs. Beginning of this year, goal was to get into the Grey Cup.
Unlike the 88 playoffs, the Riders had no fear of a quick end to their season. I never dwell on negative things. I always, I'm very optimistic and I look positive and, uh, you know, like I said, I had no doubt that we can make it to the Great Cup. And that's the attitude I'm taking. In preparing for Calgary, the Rough Riders were a loose unit. After a season plagued with injuries, the Rough Riders started to get healthy at the right time. Fairholm will be back, and I think that uh, David Albright will be back, um, and possibly Steve Crane. The Western semifinal was the fifth time the Rough Riders and Calgary played each other in the 89 campaign. The Riders had already won three of four. The law of averages was against the Riders taking a fourth from Calgary to make it three straight in McMahon Stadium. On the game's first play, fate tipped its hand in favor of the Stampeders. McLaughlin gets his game underway, high and spinning, coming down to Tim McRae at his own 15, bobbles the ball, tries to get a handle on it, picks it up, but it goes loose again, the ball is free, McCrary jumps on top of it, Calgary ball. Calgary's first offensive series of the semifinal began at the Ryder six-yard line. In a great demonstration of championship grit, the defense dug in their heels and forced Calgary to take just a field goal. In the second quarter, the defense came up even bigger. Back to pass from his own 27, looking over the middle, looking for Toner. Suter tips it, Skipper picks it up, four yards deep in the end zone. Will he have enough steam to go all the way? Cuts back inside, one man to beat, it's a big one, Fairbanks. Will he have the gas to go? The answer, no! Skipper goes down. The Ryder offense managed only a field goal, but the game was tied at six. Momentum was now pushing the Riders. The pass defense continued to excel. Barrett, second and ten from the 40, back to pass, looking over the middle of the hot pattern. Albright's got it, picked off, up to the 45, the 40, 35, Barrett takes him down at the 30. Albright's turnover set up Tim McRae's first major. The ball hawking defense got the ball back to the offense on Calgary's next scrimmage. First and ten, Barrett back to pass, trying to set up the screen, dumps it off. Jurison right there, the big defensive end intercepts it. He goes down, Bobby Jurison, interception. Eight plays later, the Riders scored another touchdown. Second and goal to go, inside handoff from McRae, four yards, he walks it in, touchdown. Inside of seven minutes, the Ryder defense created three turnovers, resulting in 17 points. At halftime, the Riders led 23-9. Calgary's offense depended on a strong ground game, but the Ryder defense was equally tough against the run and pass in the semifinal. In the third quarter, the Stamps made their comeback move. First and ten for Barrett. Rolling wide side of the field, here comes the rush. Pumps once, lets it go long down the sidelines. He's looking for Willis. He's got it! Two plays later, Martin scored a Calgary touchdown. After the convert, only eight points separated the two teams. Defensive tackle Chuck Klingbeal replaced the suspended James Curry in the heat of the playoff race. Klingbeal handled the pressure with the enthusiasm of a rookie and the big play poise of a veteran. Danny Barrett had to leave the game for good with a broken ankle in the fourth quarter. The pressure of a playoff comeback rested on the shoulders of rookie pivot Terrence Jones. Two plays later, Terrence Jones showed grace under pressure. Jones back to pass on second down, stops in the pocket, sprints outside, still looking long, looking, looking, heaves it long and hard in the end zone. Zeno's got a touchdown. Calgary takes the lead. Trailing 26-23 with 2.24 left. The Rough Rider season was in jeopardy. The veteran team was confident there was still enough time to win. Like they had done so many times in 1989, the Rough Riders took control of their destiny in the dying minutes of the fourth quarter. In the season's most intense drive, Kent Austin relied on unlikely heroes to make clutch plays, something he would do again two weeks later. Jeff Bentram also made a diving catch at the Calgary 50, a key second down conversion which kept the winning drive alive. After an incomplete pass, the Riders were second and 10, with the clock ticking down on the Riders' 89 season. In an obvious passing situation, the stage was set for the play from the bench. Second and ten from the 50, Austin back pass. Draw, draw inside, big hole up front. Walling goes through the hole. Ellingson takes out two stamps, one block. Nothing but room. Ten, five, touchdown, Walling. 
The draw play of Walling was a stroke of genius. It was the head man's call. I sent that play in, and it was one of those plays that uh, sometimes you send them in, they work. Sometimes you send them in, they don't work. That one happened to work. Brian Walling was another behind the headlines player who had stepped in at just the right time. I was thinking just to get the first down. Um, I didn't really think that, you know, we were going to break it for a touchdown. Final score, Saskatchewan 33, Calgary 26. The semifinal win meant the Riders had surpassed their 88 season. The victory showed the 89 Riders had grown up as a team. A year ago at this time, we would have lost that game today. Uh, this year we didn't, and uh, does nothing but uh, create positive vibrations for the, the whole squad. When we did fall behind in the ball game, you know, I, I didn't see anybody on the, on the sideline giving up, you know, and we... You know, you could just see it in everybody's eyes, you know, that we can we can still win this ball game. And, you know, and that really meant a lot to us. And that really gave us, you know, a, a, a plus of the momentum, you know, knowing that we can come from behind and win like that. Outstanding effort. The thing we got to do now is uh, just take this thing one step further, right? That close. The next step would be a giant one, we'll the Edmonton Eskimo. The Rock Riders were comfortable in the underdog role. I love being the underdog, you know, being five foot six, I'm always the underdog, you know, but uh, I feel good about our chances and I feel good about, you know, where we're sitting right now. Offensive coordinator Pal Sartori was not intimidated by the reputation of the Edmonton defense. We're working on the things that we know are successful against them, and we're going to put points on the board. So we're just going to line up and play, and, and hopefully we're going to knock the hell out of them. Think you can win it? Yeah, I know we can win it. There's no question about that. After the final season game against the Eskimos, the defense had learned from their mistakes. They had a definite strategy in mind for the slippery Tracy Ham. We know what we're going to do. We're going to go out there on Sunday and prove that we were a better team than we were the last time we played in Edmonton. We won't make the mistakes we did, and I think our defense will play a heck of a lot better than we did. Well, the third place team last year went into Edmonton and won. Yeah, they were 9-9 nine nine too, weren't they? That's right. Uh -huh. In time for the Western Final, the Riders were getting more starters off the injured list. An unexpected bonus was Ray Elgard returning after a six-week injury. In Edmonton, the Western Final was viewed as a mere formality in the Eskimos' ascent to coronation as 1989 Grey Cup champions. The Riders would be merely token opposition, lambs for the slaughter. The Edmonton Sun cartoon was a gift-wrapped motivational tool for John Gregory, who pinned it up in the locker room before the final. Edmonton defensive tackle John Mandrich proved Eskimo overconfidence was peaking at the right time. Well, I don't care what they put on the bulletin board. It's what they put on the field that matters. And, uh, you know, they're scrambling right now. They're trying to use whatever they can to get themselves ready, and I don't give a damn because we're ready and we can't wait till Sunday rolls around because, you know, we want, to, you know, we want them to come in here and we're going to show them what we're all about. From the outside, nobody was giving the Saskatchewan Rough Riders a chance. A rider victory would be the upset of the decade. Inside the locker room, a quiet confidence was growing. It's interesting in the fact that uh, they're going to play a 16-2 and two team, but our players, every one of them, and I think a lot of times you can get a feel after you've been in this business a long time, you look guys in the eye and say, well, what do you think? And they say, I think we can win. Every single one that I've talked to says that and they and they look at it and they don't look down when they say it or they don't look with a big question mark they look at me and they, they i think that they feel that they can beat edmonton we're at the height of our confidence and i think that we can go in there and, and beat Ed the edmonton eskimos can you win it darn right we're gonna win it the opening series set the tone for an edmonton rub the eskimos first touchdown drive was so effortless any prospect of a rider upset seemed even more outrageous Ham on first down, back to pass, looking on the sidelines, Tony Hunter there, he's got it at the 40, turns it up and run out of bounds. After an incomplete pass, Tracy Ham challenged the Riders' game plan to defense his ad-lib running. First and 10 from the 34, Ham back to pass, looking, looking, can't find anybody, tucks it down, he's going to run, up to the 35, the 30, slides in, the gain of 18 for Ham. Uh, defensively, it's, a, it's very simple, um, keep Tracy Ham in the pocket. Simple to say, right. hard to do. First and 10 from the 15, Ham back to pass. The drive going along nicely. Ham rolling out, dumps it off to Marshall. He's got it at the five, Skipper with the tackle. First and goal to go from the four. Ham up under, calling signals. He pitches out to Taylor. Ambrosi is there, Marshall's there. Taylor puts his head down, powers in for six. 
The Edmonton defense looked equally awesome when the Ryder offense got the ball for the first time. Makes the snap. Here comes the rush. Flags already. Austin squirts outside looking for room. Can't find any. Sacked. On Edmonton's second drive, the Eskimo offense was clicking again. Second and ten from the 53. Ham back to pass. He's got time. Steps up in the pocket. Delivers. Looking for Ellis. He's got it. Turns it up inside the 30. Run out of bounds. This drive ended in the Jerry Corrick field goal. With only seven and a half minutes gone in the first quarter, the Rough Riders were down 10 nothing. After the Edmonton kickoff, the Ryder offense started moving the ball. The Ryder offense put the team in Dave Ridgway's field goal range. Ridgway from the 44. The ball is down into it. It's up. It is good. Edmonton's third drive did not have that smooth rhythm. Tracy Ham felt the brunt of the Riders' new blitzing strategy. Edmonton, first and ten from their own 53. Ham looking over his troops up under Colleg signals straight back to pass. He's got time. Here comes the pressure. Sacked. Dan Rasevich. The loss is six. We felt to control Edmonton and control their offense, we had to make Tracy Ham a passer rather than a great scrambling quarterback, which he is. And we felt to do that, we had to fill all lanes, in other words, all gaps with our blitzes and overemphasize contain so that he didn't have a place to pull it down and run the ball. He had to become a drop back passer. And heading to the line, barking signals as he goes. Here comes the blitz, everything in the kitchen sink. Ham goes down, low with the sack with help from the gang. Eddie Lowe's sack was a prelude to his biggest play, the turning point of the Western final. At the Ryder 30, Edmonton was still in position to add to their seven point lead. Edmonton faced second and 14, and then it happened. The hit. Edmonton second and 15 from the 30. And up to the line. And calling signals up on. And back to pass. Here comes the blitz backside. He's decked. Ball goes loose. Albright's got it. Ambrosi can't catch him. Shows Ham didn't see it coming. A devastating blow from Eddie Lowe. The ball goes loose. Dave Albright picks it up and lumbers in for the major. Saskatchewan happy to have him back for only the second game after an assortment of injuries. I think at that point uh, we needed something to get the momentum going our way, and that definitely, you know, they came out on that first drive and drove the kind of drove the ball right down our throats, and uh, they definitely had the momentum going and they were pumped up a little bit. And at that time, you know, uh, we weren't down or anything, but I, I think that was a big, we needed a big play to get everybody excited, and that shit, it sure did, because I was getting the help beat out of me in the end zone when I got there. That play was an earthquake in Edmonton's championship composure. The Eskimos felt momentum shift from under them. On the next series, they were still reeling from the sudden turnabout. And calling signals. Handoff goes inside to Taylor. He's spun around in the hole by Crane. The ball goes loose. Who's got it? It bobbles out of bounds. Edmonton ball. Up under calling signals. Straight back to pass. Dumps it off over the middle. Intercepted by Eddie Lowe. Another great defensive play. What a game Eddie Lowe is having. The Riders capitalized a game. First and goal to go from the six. Austin calling signals. Straight back to pass. Looking in the corner. Puts it up. All alone out there. Touchdown. Inside of three minutes, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had come back from a 10-3 deficit to move ahead 17-10. An upset was taking shape. The Rider defense continued to apply pressure to the rattled Edmonton quarterback. Second and six from the 50. Ham calling signals. Saskatchewan showing blitz. They come with one. Ham has to step up, gets away from one block, lets it go. It's nowhere near anybody. Blitzing strategy left the Rider defense vulnerable to off-tackle draws. But the Eskimos only exploited this option once, successfully, the entire Western Final. Second and five from the 30. Ham calling signals. It's the quick hitting draw right at the middle. Taylor's got it. He's at the 35, the 40, 45, 50, into Saskatchewan territory. Skipper takes him down the game, 51. On that drive, Edmonton's struggling offense could only manage a field goal. As the game wore on, Tracy Ham and the Edmonton Brain Trust could not solve the rider defense. First down, Ham rolls out wide, looking long downfield, puts it up. He's looking for the man, Hunter, incomplete, nowhere close. 
late in the second quarter. In one play, the Riders lost the ball and their starting quarterback. Austin back to pass. Here comes Braswell. Hits him. Ball goes loose. Hill's got it. Interception Edmonton. Ken Austin was out for the game. Could this be the turning point for the Eskimos? Against some teams it might have been, but this was the 89 Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And once again, the Riders were strong in the face of adversity. Edmonton got nothing on the turnover. Fittingly, much maligned safety Glenn Suter killed their drive with a timely interception off a Harry Skipper tip. And Tom Burgess was sensational in relief of the injured Kent Austin. Halftime, Saskatchewan 17, Edmonton 13. After some halftime adjustments in the dressing room, Edmonton's offense fashioned a comeback touchdown drive. And calling signals back to pass. Here comes the blitz. He gets out of the pocket, tries to dump it off, gets it to Taylor. He's got it to the 45. The 40 looking for outside running when Jurison dies. Can't get him. Cuts it up inside the 30. Run out of bounds by Skipper. First down from the 10. Ham calling signals. Takes the handoff inside. Will it be the handball pitch? No. Keeps it himself. Goes in. Touchdown, Ham. Edmonton regained the lead at 2017. The jubilation would be short lived. With over 25 minutes left in the game, it was Edmonton's last touchdown of the fabled Eskimo season. The Ryder defense reasserted their domination on the next Edmonton drive. Second and five, back to pass. And by the receiver, here comes the blitz. Goldsmith drops him. Loss is five. The Eskimo defense continued their blitzing game plan, and Tom Burgess couldn't be happier. Past the midway point in the third quarter, Burgess found his big play range. Second and ten, Burgess back to pass. Delivers as he's hit, the ball is up. Fairholm breaks away, he's got it! Off the kickoff, the surging riders recovered another Edmonton fumble. From Saskatchewan's rookie of the year to now Alapate rocked Keith Wright. Keith Wright on the kickoff return, heading straight up the middle. Hit in the hole by Alapate. Ball goes free, who's got it? Narcisse has it, Saskatchewan ball. The Riders advanced on a pass interference call against Don Narcisse. From the Eskimo 14, the Riders cashed in the latest Edmonton turnover. Second and six for Burgess. Back to pass, looking in the corner, puts it up in the end zone for Elgard. He's got it! Let's look at the replay. Burgess with lots of protection, rolls out, looks in the end zone, puts it up. And a great athletic move, Algar taking it away from Stanley Blair. Fans all over Saskatchewan cheered Elgard's sensational catch. For the 88 Shenley Award winner, the touchdown was a sweet moment. Elgard had rebounded from an average season and a possible season-ending injury to help lift his team to a Grey Cup berth. The Riders were ahead to stay 31-20. In the fourth quarter, a promising Edmonton push only yielded a point when the CFL's leading scorer, Jerry Corrick, kicked a 41-yard single on a field goal attempt. Starting at the Ryder 35, Tom Burgess engineered a back-breaking fourth quarter drive. Burgess on first down. Straight back to pass, fakes the pitch, looks over the middle, dumps it to Elgard, he's got it. Bull straight ahead, extra yardage on extra effort. Later in the drive, Tom Burgess caught the hard-driving Edmonton defense flat-footed. Second and 13. Burgess hands off inside to Milson Jones straight up the gut 20 15 10 he goes down inside the 10 Milson Jones on a third down gamble Saskatchewan turned over the ball on the Edmonton three yard line but the 11 play 74 yard drive had run down the clock and put Edmonton in poor field position the Eskimos reached their own 40 in two plays but the comeback once again hit a snag the 89 Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Relentless rider defense trapped the Eskimos in their half of the field for the remainder of the game. And second and ten. Back to pass. Forced out of the pocket. Here comes Suter. Drops him for a one-yard loss. For Glenn Suter and his teammates, the against-all-odds victory was very rewarding. Suter's outstanding late-season turnaround in his on-field performance mirrored the dramatic season reversal of the whole team. First and ten. And calling signals. Back to pass. Here comes the blitz. The pressure's there. Pitches out to Taylor. The ball goes loose. He's got it. Dropped for a loss. Who else? Glenn Suter. Edmonton's fourth quarter comeback never materialized. In the end, an Edmonton victory was just a fantasy. The Ryder triumph was the reality. The 89 Riders had confounded the experts with a decisive 31-20 win right in Commonwealth Stadium. 
For quarterback Tom Burgess, the Eskimos' aggressive defense was tailor-made for his big play style. I really think that, that playing Edmonton, even though I didn't beat him when I was here earlier this year, I really think it's a good matchup for me because I like to use the inside receivers, I like to throw against man-to-man, -man, and I love to throw against blitz. Uh, and it, it gives me that confidence that I, I know I'm in, in, my, in my niche when I play against a team like that. Well, I really think it's a field position we got from our defense because our defense just played super the whole day, and uh, they just kept giving us a ball in great field position, and uh, we were managing to score there a few times, and uh, I just give all the credit to our defense. They beat us with that safety blitz, and whether, whether it was up the middle or outside, and then they brought a will, we just did not pick it up, and I don't know why, because we were ready for it. We knew it was coming, so it's just, it's difficult. Nobody gave us a chance, and they, they're a great team. The media didn't give us a chance, nobody in Canada, but nobody in this room believed that we couldn't win. We had a lot of confidence. You know, they talked a bit during the week. We just kept quiet, and, you know, actions are louder than words, and we came out on top today. Hey, you know, I mean, I learned obviously something, you know, this week. You know, I guess you're never told to learn something, and, you know, I was vocal, but, you know, that's just my personality. I mean, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, that was the difference or what, I mean, but... You know, I told the guys, go ahead and celebrate tonight, but after tonight, then we get ready. We are not just going to the Grey Cup, we're going to win the Grey Cup. That's... You bet! <laughs> that's... We can't be satisfied with just this. It was all hail the conquering heroes when the Saskatchewan Rough Riders touched down in their home province. The Regina Airport was crammed with 2,000 football fans who shared the pride of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on winning the team's first Western Division title in 13 years. At Taylor Field, John Gregory meets the players for the first time after the Rough Riders had won the West. What a great win for you. What a great win for the Saskatchewan people. What a great win for our staff and organization. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders' long, hard fight against incredible odds earned the team a Grey Cup berth. For Coach John Gregory, the achievement was a testament to the team's inner strength. And I think the, the measure of a team is not how you play when you're ahead, but how you play when you're behind. We've got to bring the Grey Cup back to Saskatchewan where it belongs. Before flying to the Grey Cup, the Rough Riders were honored at a City Hall pep rally in Regina. Hundreds of fans turned out to show their favorite team. They were behind them in their quest for the Grey Cup. At least one fan was looking for the riders to clean up in Toronto. After many strange twists and turns, the long and winding road of the storied 89 rider season has brought the Saskatchewan Rough Riders back to the Sky Dome and the national classic, the Grey Cup. Standing in the Sky Dome on the eve of his first Grey Cup game invoked a gee whiz reaction in starry-eyed Richie Hall. I still can't believe we're here. You know, we've had such a, a up and down season and a lot of times it looked real bleak that we would even maybe even be in the playoffs for a while and then you know we weren't healthy too much and now that we're here it's like a dream come true like fantasy fantasy world or something four weeks before all this happened i was just sitting back and wondering you know how do you get there you know and so i'm not you know we're finally here and uh which is going to come out sunny and uh you know play, play as best as we can for every CFL player, training camp opens with the promise of a Grey Cup season. For center Mike Anderson, the Riders' appearance in the 1989 Grey Cup fulfilled his own preseason prediction of a Rider Grey Cup berth. Michael, now you're here. I mean, we've been talking to you off and on all season long, and uh, I, I think you're probably the first one I've talked to this year that actually brought up Grey Cup. And you had this in the back of your mind all season long, didn't you? Well, I think we did after, after last year. I think the biggest lesson, I've said it all year long, though, I think we, we realized is, first of all, we can make the playoffs. Second of all, when we do, we've got the experience now to realize that it's a three-game season. Playing in their first Grey Cup, could the Ryder players handle the pregame fanfare and the pressure of the media crunch and stay focused on the Grey Cup? I think that uh, the players have handled the distraction quite well. In Toronto, the town was taking on a definite shade of green. It's uh, been a wonderful Grey Cup week. Uh, I think the, uh, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders being here in Toronto, uh, there's never been so much green all over Toronto. People are referring to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders now as Canada's team. Are you guys hearing that? I always, uh, I always uh, kind of thought that because uh, for the last four years, you know, I go back to, to Halifax or, or wherever, and you know, I've, there's a lot of fans out there in Saskatchewan. The day of the Grey Cup game, the Riders staged a pep rally at Maple Leaf Gardens and showed the entire country Rider pride. Grey Cup day at Toronto Sky Dome.
The Saskatchewan Rough Riders meet the Hamilton Tiger Cat. The last time the two teams played each other in a Grey Cup, Hamilton won a heartbreaker on Ian Sunter's final play of the game field goal. In 1989, the two teams who survived the football season's worst torrential downpour were opponents in the first Grey Cup played in the fair weather environs of Toronto Sky Dome. November 26 was a fortuitous date for the Rough Riders. The last time a Grey Cup had been played on the 26th was in 1966, the only time the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had won the Cup. The gap between the only Cup win and the 1989 game was 23 years, 23 being the retired number of Ryder quarterback great Ron Lancaster. General Manager Al Ford played on the 1966 team. 1989 was his first year as Rough Rider GM. It's for real, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are in the Grey Cup at last. What happened in 1989 to transform training camp dreamers into a team of bona fide Grey Cup contenders? I think that a couple of years ago, uh, that, was the, that was one of the main problems, just to try to get people to focus on, uh, on how to play and how to win. And uh, certainly we really haven't felt that they had to work any harder, because they've always been very hardworking players, but they had to play smarter, actually, and uh, do, do the same things they've been doing, only only play a little smarter and and uh, turn themselves loose a little bit. Well, on our team, we have, especially defensive, we have certain types of players that are, you know, not very two-rate type guys, but uh, it's an attitude that an individual has to take, and, uh, and I think that's what we've done as a unit. And we've looked at ourselves, and uh, like I said, we're just playing for each other. You can look back from our training camp and say that it all really started there, you know. We worked hard during training camp, and, you know, it kind of carried over into the season. Uh, you're right, you do have to pay that, that little extra price, and I think we did, but well, we still have just a little bit more to go. We're here for one reason, and one purpose only, and that is to win the Grey Cup. And uh, that's foremost on everybody's mind. We didn't play all year and go through what we did to, to just get here. We want to win this game, so, you know, everyone's going to be ready to play. Now I'm hungry to, to hopefully win the, the thing. I'm, you know, I don't want to come here and lose. That is not... Um, that is not in my mind at all. If I'm here, we better win. Because I, you know, I can imagine the elation of winning it, but I can't even imagine how deep or how depressing it could be to lose this thing after fighting so hard to get here. I never won a championship before. I've never been in uh, a position where I could win a championship. Right now, I can see in every, each and every player that, you know, they have that, that ring in the eyes, and so that's, that's definitely what we're shooting for right now. Almost everybody on our team, except for Milton, you know, has never been in the Great Cup. And so we, you know, it is the ultimate goal for anyone playing in the CFL. And, uh, you know, I've been in the league seven years, and a lot of guys have been here for a number of years, and, you know, we finally made it, and now we want to make it good. After a week of practice and media interviews, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and Hamilton Tiger Cats laid a season of hard work on the line in what was to be a history-making breakup game. Big game jitters hit the Ryder offense, and the first drive sputtered. Open and 10 from the 27. Austin back to pass. Here comes the rush. Looking for the outlet man. Throws it way over Milson Jones' head. On their second drive, Hamilton's offense moved the ball with authority. Harrigan on first down. Back to pass. Turns to the sidelines. Let's it go. zatoni has got it. Wiggins with the tackle. The Tiger Cats worked their way to the Ryder 35 before Paul Osbaldiston attempted his first field goal in what would be a flawless afternoon. Dylan holding. Osbaldison from 42 yards out. It's up. And it's good. In the Riders' next series, Kent Austin was stung by an old nemesis. Frank Robinson, he's a, he's a load out there at that linebacker post. Austin first and 10 from the 46. Back to pass. Sprints outside looking underneath. Delivers the ball. Robinson intercepts it at midfield. Cuts back up inside. Gets to the 50 and goes down. Milson Jones with a tackle. On defense. Defensive back Harry Skipper knew his Great Cup assignment. Covering Tony Champion would not be easy. Oh, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, the guy, he has the best stats in the league this year. So, I, you know, it's going to take a lot of concentration to try and, you know, I don't think we can shut the guy out. But we just got to try hard and contain him. You know, don't let him just run crazy on the field. And second down, Kerrigan back to pass quickly, finds Champion up at the 45, turns, heads for the sidelines, Skipper in pursuit, takes him out of bounds, and Champion appears to be hurt. After Kerrigan missed on two passes, Paul Osbaldiston made it two for two. Paul Osbaldiston from 38 yards out, snap is down, the ball is up, and it's good. 
Seldom used wide receiver Mark Guy was destined to be a key player in the Grey Cup. I think we need to get the ball to Mark Guy this week and uh, make sure he gets involved in the flow of the game and uh, you know, just go from there. I think this week uh, Mark Guy against Will Lewis is a good matchup. I really do. First down. Austin back to pass. Stop. Steps up in the pocket. Delivers underneath. Hits Guy over the middle. Tries to spin away but can't escape Sonny Gordon. The Riders finished that drive with a Terry Baker single. Hamilton quarterback Mike Kerrigan spearheaded the first touchdown drive of the 89 Grey Cup. First down, Kerrigan back to pass. Quickly looks outside, dumps it to Winfield. He's got it. Tries to turn the corner into Saskatchewan territory. Goes out of bounds near the 50. Derek McAdoo ran for three yards before Kerrigan went back to Winfield. Second and seven. Kerrigan takes the snap, looks outside, pumps. He's going to run it. No, decides to let it go. Winfield's got it. Up to the 30, 28, he's down. Colleague signals. Straight back to pass quickly on the hot pad, and Hall's got it. No, it's a stall. What a catch! First and ten from the 13. Kerrigan back to pass. Lost it in the end zone. The timing pattern. Touchdown, champion! After the convert, Hamilton led 13 to one. In the absence of injured special teams ace Albert Brown, Coach Gregory knew kickoff and punt return squads had to go that extra mile. The kickoff team responded, creating several big plays. And one of the biggest ended the first quarter on a high note for the struggling Rough Riders. As Baldison lets it go, kicking it off high and spinning, coming down to Tim McRae at the 13, up to the 20, the 25, the 30, looking outside, 35, 40, makes a break over the 40, gets by one, gets by two, breaks another tackle inside the 50. Timmy McRae, what a return. When the offense stalled, it was Terry Baker's job to improve the field position advantage McCray's kickoff return had given the Rough Riders. Before the game, Baker said he liked the Sky Dome. I do. Uh, I think uh, the bottom line is if uh, we can limit them, uh, Earl Winfield to, uh, I guess, uh, as few yards as possible on the return side when we're on the uh, punting team. Baker sets a punt on third down. He tries to angle it for the sidelines. It's up. Beautiful punt marked in touch at the seven. With Hamilton backed into their own zone, the wider defense tightened up. Harrigan on first down. Got two backs in tight in an eye formation. Tommy up the block. Hand off to McAdoo. Nowhere to go. Vince Goldsmith in a green wall saying hello. The wider offense came to life when Kent Austin ignited the passing attack. I think it'd be Hamilton throwing the ball. Um, just because, I'm not saying that we can't run, but it's tough to run on them. They're so good up front. They've got such great down linemen. Oscar on first down, calling signals. Back to pass, looks wide side of the field, delivers to Fairholm. He's got it. Turns the corner at midfield. Gordon and Chase takes him out at the 40. Austin from the 40. Back to pass. Looks over the middle, puts it up. Great catch, Elgar. Second and 10. Austin back to pass. Looking down the middle, delivers. Narcisse is there, he's got it! Inside the five. First and goal to go from the five. Austin back to pass, finds a hole in the end zone, puts it up, Elgar's there. Touchdown, Saskatchewan's first six. The icebreaker for any team in a big game is the first touchdown. The six-play touchdown drive covered 62 yards and boosted the offense's confidence. For the next quarter, Kent Austin would prove unstoppable. Setting the frenzied seesaw rhythm of the first Skydome Grey Cup, the Ticat offense immediately answered the rider touchdown. First and ten. Back to pass. Rolls out. Looks underneath. Hits Di Pietro outside the 40. Cuts it up. He's carrying some green inside the 30. The blitz that foiled Edmonton's Tracy Ham was suspect against the Hamilton quarterback. When the rider defense gambled, Kerrigan burned them with his quick trigger. Second and ten. Harrigan back to pass. Here comes the blitz. He avoids it. Gets the ball away. McAdoo's got it. Touchdown. After the convert, the Riders were in a 12-point hole. Before the game, Coach John Gregory said he wasn't worried about falling behind early. I really don't, you know, because this team has come back from, um, from being down Dale so many times that uh, I think almost right now anything could happen to us early, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised. If bad things happen to us early in the game, that we can fight our way out of. True to their 1989 comeback character, the Riders wasted no time in rebounding. On the first play after the Hamilton kickoff, Kent Austin aired it out. The home run ball. First down, Austin back to pass. 
Let's the bomb go long, looking for Pharaoh, and he's got it. In the season of making big plays on a bad ankle, Jeff Fairholm had saved one of his best for the Great Cup. The Riders quick strike did not break Hamilton's offensive momentum. Second and two, short yardage crew in, but Kerrigan throws outside. Champion all alone turns the corner at the 50. 55, Suter brings him down. Nine plays and 71 yards later, Hamilton padded their lead. First and goal to go from the one. Kerrigan hands off inside to McAdoo. Power straight ahead. Touchdown, Hamilton. The Riders come back heart paced another scoring drive. In the team's 89 tradition, another platoon hero made a timely contribution. Backup slot back James Ellingson was an important target in the touchdown march. Second and 10, Austin straight back to pass. He's got lots of time, delivers it over the middle. Ellingson's there, he's got it at the 50. After completions to Elgard and Narcisse, Austin again hooked up with number 85. Austin again on second and ten. Goes straight back to pass. Again right over the middle. Again it's Ellingson. He's got it inside the 20. First and goal to go from the five. Austin back to pass. Looking in the end zone. Delivers. Narcisse has it on the goal line. No sign yet from the official. Is he in or is he not? Yes. Touchdown Saskatchewan. Late in the second quarter, the Rough Riders get a break on the only Hamilton turnover of the first half. Second and five for Kerrigan. Takes the snap, drops straight back. Finds Di Pietro, who's got it up near the 50. Turns inside. Hold trying to battle him, but he can't. Di Pietro to pitch up. And he got, goes loose. Goldsmith has it. In the final play of the first half, Dave Ridgeway's 50-yard field goal attempt went wide, and Hamilton ran it out of the end zone. It was Robo Kicker's only miss of the 89 Grey Cup. Going into the dressing room, the Riders had only a five point deficit to overcome. The Riders received the kickoff to open the second half. As Ballison kicks it off high and spinning, it comes down to Guy, takes it inside his own 15, 20, 25, the 30, 35, finds room inside, sprints forward, up over the 40, 45, and he's dropped by Sam Lutz. The Rider offense started the second half strongly. And second and five. Austin back to pass. He's got time. Good protection. Steps up. Let's it go. Elgard in heavy traffic makes the catch. The first possession of the second half ended with a good omen. Ridgeway with the attempt from 34 yards out. Puts it up. And it goes off the post and in. Things have to go away because that's the first time I had banked in off the upright in about 12 years. So. After a shaky first half, the rider defense bears down. McAdoo takes the handoff inside, heavy traffic, dropped for a loss by Chuck Klingbeer. But they still had their hands full with Tony Champion. Second and 12, Kerrigan back to pass, looks outside, puts it up for Champion. He's got it, stretches out and pulls it in. In spite of Tony Champion, the wider defense did halt the Hamilton drive and forced a Hamilton field goal. In the spirit of 1989, the wider supporting cast always came through. On Grey Cup Day, Mark Guy rose to the occasion as an important receiver and showed unexpected flair on special teams. His 36-yard kickoff return put the wider offense in great shape at their own 54. First and 10 from the 51, Austin back to pass. Looks over the middle, hits Tim McRae, makes one miss. Inside Hamilton territory, Frank Robinson brings him down at the 41. Corbin sacked Austin to put the Riders out of field goal range, one of the few times Hamilton penetrated the Rough Riders' solid pass protection. Terry Baker won the battle of field position with a seeing-eye punt. Baker to punt on third down from his own 45. Puts it up high and long. Great booming punt. Lands down on the 15, rolls and bounces, goes out of bounds, in the touch of the three. Great punt. The defense kept the Ticats pinned down. First down at the three, inside handoff goes to McAdoo. The ball is stripped, it goes loose. He jumps back on top. Kerrigan gave the Ryder defense and their fans a big play scare. 
On second down, Kerrigan straight back to pass. Looks long down the sidelines. It's only wide open. Too far. With the pressure of punting from his own end zone, Paul Osbaldiston had to make an unexpected split-second decision. On third down, Osbaldiston to kick from his own end zone. The snap is high. Will he get the ball away? No, Steve Wiggins there forcing the safety. Hamilton 30, Saskatchewan 27. After the Hamilton kickoff, the Riders regained field advantage in one play. Second and eight from his own 35. Austin calling signals. Back to pass, looking on the sidelines. Hits his man, Narcisse, he's got it! First down, Austin. Back to pass, fakes the handoff. Rolls wide side, looking long in the end zone for Elgard. It's up! Gordon and Rockford all over him. The flags come down. From the one, the handoff goes to McCray in behind Aldag and Anderson. They push it over. Touchdown. The wider defense's adjustments to their base defense began to pay off. Hamilton's next offensive drive ran into a brick wall. Second and four for the Tiger Cats. Kerrigan back to pass. Swings it out to McAdoo in the flats. Lowe comes up with a big stick. The loss is won. In the Grey Cup game, the forgotten Mark Guy began to take on heroic stature. Second and 11 from the 35. Austin calling signals. Back to pass. Looking on the sidelines. Puts it up. Guy's there. He's got it. 35, 30, 25. He's down. A Hamilton sack and an incomplete pass cooled off the wider drive at the Hamilton 18. A chip shot for Dave Ridgway. Saskatchewan 37, Hamilton 30. After an offensive show in the Grey Cup's first half, it was the turn of both defenses to take a bow. Hamilton, first down. Kerrigan straight back to pass. Looking over the middle for Di Pietro. It's picked off by Suter. He's got it. 45, the 50, midfield into Hamilton territory and draw heads up play, Glenn Suter. And first down, Elgard in motion. Austin back to pass. He pitches out to Elgard, and he'll throw. Looking on downfield for Guy. It's intercepted by Will Lewis. Saskatchewan turns the ball over. Kerrigan back to pass. And the final receiver. Here comes the rush. Gary Lewis pins him in. Turns the corner. Kerrigan back near his own goal line. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Klingbeal takes him down. For Chuck Klingbeal, the sack was the highlight of an award-winning defensive performance, the supreme irony of the 1989 Grey Cup. Had James Curry not been suspended, Chuck Klingbeal would not have played. Hamilton's next drive never got going as the rider front four controlled the big, strong Hamilton offensive line. Second and five, inside handoff goes to McAdoo, but the hole is turned green, it turned ugly. Hamilton broke the defensive impasse with an exciting trick play. Baker to punt on third down, puts it up high. Winfield there waiting for it. He takes it and hands it off in the reverse to Sonny Gordon. Turns the corner. He's up at the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 in the Saskatchewan territory. He goes down near the 50. The reverse gave the Tiger Cats their best field position of the fourth quarter. A 16-yard completion to Lee Knight moved the ball down to the rider 34. Kerrigan on first down. Here comes the rush, back to pass, nowhere to go. Sacked by Gary Lewis. Paul's Balliston from 47 yards out. He has more than enough room. Starting at their own 37, the Ryder offense started the drive looking for an insurance touchdown. Austin kept the Hamilton secondary guessing using six different receivers. Nielsen Jones plunged three yards, setting up the most controversial play of the 1989 Grey Cup game. On second and seven, Kent Austin gambled on putting the game out of reach. Second and seven. Austin back to pass. Looking in the end zone, puts it up long. Will Lewis jumps in front, he's got it. Intercepted, but they say he's out of bounds. The referee ruled an incompletion. Coach Al Bruno complained loudly that his team had been robbed of an interception. On an offensive risk, the Riders had broken even. Ridgeway came on the field to provide the insurance the Riders would need. For Ridgeway, the 20-yard field goal was a tune-up for glory. His 1989 curtain call was still to come. 
Saskatchewan 40, Hamilton 33. 157 was left in the 1989 Grey Cup when the Hamilton offense regrouped for a comeback drive. A nine yard completion to DiPietro and a six yard run from McAdoo set up Hamilton's first down play from the Saskatchewan 42. Kerrigan on first down, back to pass, looking long for champion skippers there with them. It goes incomplete. Champion complaining, no flags though. Al Bruno was outraged that no interference penalty was called. On the next play, the Ticats drew a flag. Kerrigan back to pass, looking downfield for Winfield. Wiggins all over him, the flags come down. With Hamilton facing third and goal, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were one play away from winning their second Grey Cup when it happened. The impossible. The Tiger Cats gambling on third down. Kerrigan back to pass, looking in the end zone for champion. An incredible twist and catch. Touchdown, Ticats. Champion's feet seemed more amazing later when it was learned the Hamilton wide receiver had played most of the game with broken ribs. Suddenly, the game was tied. Gregory knew with 44 seconds left, there was still time to win. After conferring with the coach, Kent Austin went into the rider huddle. Well, the first thing that went through my mind, obviously, was uh, here we go again, a typical Saskatchewan football game in which we were put in a situation where we had, we had to have a last-second drive or a last-minute drive uh, to win. It was an unbelievable catch by Champion. I think the thing that's uh, really good to remember or, or something that we need to keep in mind is the fact that the guys didn't let that catch deflate them and uh, and take the wind out of our sails and say, well, you know, we're just going to go into overtime. Uh, they went out on the field, and I, I looked in everybody's faces, and they were really concentrating because we'd been there quite a few times in the last two years in the same type of situation. Austin calling signals second and 10 from his own 36. Back to pass. Looking down the sidelines, over Pete Giotopoulos. He's got it. Elgar, first down. That happened. And what we've had success with here in Saskatchewan in our offense is the continuation on the out and up by the slots. In other words, we'd run the post and then the slots would run down the sidelines, which, which is a play that at time we hit Jeff Fairholm on in the Edmonton game. So when we stopped the guy on the sidelines, the, the defensive backs continue to run thinking it's going to be a deep route, and the slot sits there all by himself on the sidelines, and that's what really ran. He ran a great route. First and 10 from the 54. Austin calling signals. Straight back, turns to pass. Looking down the middle, hits Guy. He's rocked, but hangs on. First down, a gain of 18. We got out of bounds with that play to Ray Elgar, and, and the clock was stopped, so I huddled the guys up. And what I started thinking then was I had gone to my right twice the first two plays. We've had a tendency here over the last couple of years to be very right handed in our passing game. And I thought it would be best to, to change him up and go back to the wide side of the field and, and use Mark Guy or, or Jeff Fairholm and throw to my left. Especially in a situation like that, I, I felt like Hamilton would probably overplay the right side of the ball and, and covering Narcisse and Elgar. So I came back and just tried to run a deep in route to, to Mark Guy, and he ran a great route. And, the ball probably was a little late, but Mark made a good catch on it, and their safety came in and put a good hit on him, but he held on to the ball. First and 10 from the 36. Austin straight back to pass, looking on the sidelines for a guy again. He's got it, first down. Here again, I, I tried to use a strategy in which I felt Hamilton would overplay our right side of the ball, especially after just completing the ball to Mark Guy. The wide side of the field was to Narcisse's side, and I thought that they'd probably think he would favor that side. The hopes and dreams of the Saskatchewan Rock Riders and their fans were riding on the reliable toe of Dave Ridgway. I hope it comes down to, uh, to the last second of the game and uh, Dave Ridgway is kicking a 40-yard field goal uh, or less and, and we've won the ball game. A 35-yard field goal to win the Grey Cup. Poley snapping. Suter holding. Ridgway to kick. It's up. It's good. After the glorious field goal, there were still two seconds remaining. 
Nothing was a formality in the Riders' weird and wonderful 1989 season. It's all over. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders are the 1989 Grey Cup champion. Final score, Saskatchewan 43, Hamilton 40. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders ain't over till it's over season was finally over. But the memories of this incredible journey to the top of the CFL will never end. The Riders' Cinderella story had a very happy ending. Since watching from the sidelines 13 years before in a breakup loss, the wait for Roger Albag at the time seemed remarkably short. In the midst of all the cup-winning jubilation, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders never forgot their loyal fans. Their hero, Robo kicker Dave Ridgway, was the first to pay tribute to the world's greatest fans with a Grey Cup dedication to them on national television. Yeah, I want to dedicate this to the people of Saskatchewan because they've hung with us for an awful long time. What can you say about our fans? They're fantastic. You know, I, I, I'm, they're so fantastic, I'm a little worried about what they're doing to my house right now because after we won last week, I had stuff all over my house. Back in Saskatchewan, Fans spilled into the streets to celebrate the first Saskatchewan Rough Rider Grey Cup victory in 23 years. When the Saskatchewan Rough Riders returned from the heady glory of a Grey Cup win, their extended family of Rough Rider fans welcomed them home in that special Saskatchewan way. 17,000 people came to Taylor Field on a wintry night to thank their favorite team for giving them a memorable year and to share the pride of bringing home the Grey Cup. I can't believe all these people came out to greet us. This is, this is unreal. I don't think you'd find this anywhere else. In 1989, what the Saskatchewan Rough Rider football team achieved could not have happened without the support of the world's greatest fan who pulled the team through the lean years of the playoff drought. The 1989 Grey Cup win is part of the ongoing Saskatchewan story of struggling together to overcome enormous odds. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders and their fans can always share the pride of that memorable year, 1989, when the world's best fans had the best football team. We are the 1989 Grey Cup champions, and that'll live forever, baby.